Okay, last video for the pig game. This is where we started. This was the demo that I'd made before. And note when we roll, it actually looks like the die is rolling and flipping around randomly. That's pretty cool. Well, ours over here that we just finished making, I don't see any fancy animation. That's kind of boring. So let's make ours better. This is where we're going to start using the animation timer. So let's go ahead and make one of those like we were doing in our lab before. Let's go make an animation timer here. Okay, so making a private class called Roller. Nobody else needs to know about this. It's my class, but it is going to extend the animation timer. Now, this is how it does it. Import the animation timer. Here's where it goes, and it says, well, you're not really doing it until you do what? You need that handle method. Okay, so it brings in what we call this now to make it easier to remember what's going on. We added a couple that data members up here and private long frames per second, 50 frames per second, private long interval equals a huge number. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, L divided by frames per second. Now that's saying this is my number of, I think, microseconds or nanoseconds. And it was saying divide that by the frames per second, and that tells you how long I want to be going at. So private long last equals zero. This is how we would write what was happening before. If now minus last is greater than the interval, it's time to do something. So this is our animation timer. This is what we want to be doing. So inside here, we want to be rolling our die. So int r equals one plus int. We don't want to actually roll the die. Well, you know, we could. We could just have the die bounce around. That's going to be easier. But, but the strange thing is the die could roll a one, and it's going to be weird to see turn order or turnover flashing up there. So let's continue in this way. I really only want to display in this animation numbers that are between two and five. That's going to look better on the screen. So I take my math.random times five, cast it, and then add two to it. Now R is going to be two, three, four, five, six. So set the die image to be that random number that just got rolled. And now we're going to say last equals now. And so this is going to roll the die 50 times a second. We're going to be flashing those on the screen. Okay, we actually want to have an, an instance of roller. So we're going to say this is our roller clock. We've got to create it down here when we initialize things. We have to say roller equals a new, or a clock equals a new roller, and we're ready to go. Okay, so when we roll, we want to do the animation. We're going to make a new method called roll animation. And in there, it's going to start the clock. Okay, don't forget, I have to go to scene builder and say, no, you don't do roll, you do roll animation. Okay, so let's try it now. Obviously, I broke some things, but I'm going to see if my animation's working.
Yes. Yes, it is. I started the animation and now it will never end. So let's actually make it end besides killing the program. So up here we want to say, wait, have I rolled enough? This is where I'm going to say like private and count equals zero. How many times have I rolled? And let's make another one up here. Private int max rolls equals well 20. If it's going to do it 50 times a second, we're going to do it two-fifths of a second, and that's going to look like enough rolls. So down here, let's ask if I've rolled too much. Count plus plus if this count is greater than max rolls. Well, it's time to stop, right? I can stop myself and let's go call that other roll method that we had and reset our count for next time. So now roll animation will start the clock. The clock is going to keep running until it's done enough animations and then it's going to stop and then finally go call roll which goes down here, rolls the real die, and then updates the views. So let's see if that's working for us. Hey, there's our animation. Perfect. So weird thing what you can do, you can click roll multiple times. I want to disable those. When I'm rolling and the animation's going, I don't want these buttons to be active at all. So I have to write another method up here. Public void hmm, disable buttons. Let's bring in a Boolean. And then let's go talk to our buttons, right? We gave them names, roll button, hold button. Hadn't used them yet, except for that one way of doing things. Here I'm going to say roll button dot set disable to be this value that gets passed in. Same thing for hold button. Hold button set disable to be this value. Okay, so when the clock is started, I want to disable the buttons. When the clock is stopped, I want to enable the buttons, which means to do a false on disabling the buttons. Now let's see if we can see that happen here. Hey! They disappear, they gray out. Good. Good, that's exactly what I wanted to do. My animation, I couldn't do stuff in a while loop down here. I had to call my clock timer and I had to disable the buttons, but to life what goes on, the clock timer works in the background. And so that one is the one that has to wake the buttons back up. Okay, that gets us pretty much through it. There is one more thing we would probably need to do. We need to say, hey, is the game over? And so what we might do right here at the end is to say, oh, if the game is over, Then let's disable the buttons. You can't play the game anymore. You shouldn't be able to roll once the game is over. And let's change the text up here at the top. I want to change this text up here, so I need a name for it. I need a label, fxml label. This is my title. I import my class. And now let's talk to it. 
title.set text name over big dot get current dot get name wins. There we go. So at the end of the game, someone is going to get the game over banner at the top. Last thing, I need to click on something else and then click back. Aha, now it's available for my title. Save it and my game should work. Let's see if I can quickly get the game up to a good high score. I'm gonna play the optimal strategy. Go to oh, 21, I hold. Whenever I get a score of 21, otherwise I keep rolling. 3, 9, 11, 14, 19, 24, that's enough. Let's see how fast we can do this. Feels a little risky. Oh, I should have held. There we go. Good, okay. Getting some high scores now, 65 to 45, 85 to 45. Let's see what we can do, player one. Press your luck. Oh, well, I should have held there because I was gonna go over I shouldn't have waited until 20, but hey, look at that, 1785 if I hold, 102. Oh no, why am I still able to go? My total score is greater than the other one. Oh, there's probably something wrong with my model. Oh, there we go, player one wins. That's very strange. There should have been one more check. And so I'll have to fix my model, but that sort of takes care of our example for making a pig game in JavaFX. Now note, this one doesn't include an extra data structure, like a, a tree or a hash table or a stack or a queue. We'll do that in my next example.